thanks everyone for joining us. Matt, welcome and uh, congratulations once again. Jackie, why don't you start us off? Hey Matt, how's it going? First off, congratulations on the honor. Thank you, hi Jackie. Hi, um, so just there's only 12 people that have been inducted into the Ring of Honor. So what does this mean to you to be included in such a prestigious group? Well, I think for any anybody that played in Seattle, um, you know, it's one of the first things you notice when you walk in that stadium, you see the names in the ring of honor. And, you know, for me in particular, I knew some of the names and I didn't know all the names or didn't know enough about all the names. And so I made it a point to, to learn what I could, you know, right away, basically. And, uh, you know, there was just something special about what each one of those people meant to the Seattle Seahawks and to the city at their time. And, um, you know, just, just a huge honor. You just feel so much respect towards those people. And then to even be considered, uh, is, it, is just an incredible honor. So, you know, I, th I think that the, the, the danger would be to think of this as just like an individual award. And I, and I really, I really don't, you know, I don't know who of my teammates will or won't ever get in. I don't know that, but, uh, I do think that me going in, it's just it's sort of a, uh, symbolic of all those great teammates that I had and, and not just teammates, there's way more people than just teammates that, you know, contributed to our success, but, but for sure, like some of the teammates deserve more credit than they got. And I probably deserve less credit than I got at times. So it's, um, it's a long way to say it just, it's an incredibly incredible honor to be included with, uh, with the names that, you know, I, I looked up at for so many years. When you look back at your career in Seattle, what are some of the memories that stand out to you, whether it's on the field, off the field, fans, whatever it may be? Yeah, there's so many. I mean, I feel like I could write a book uh, about uh, all, all of them. And the funny thing is, is I remember sort of the the tougher times than better than I remember some of the great moments. And I don't exactly know why that is, but but I do remember, you know, everything from Eastern Washington, you know, having training camp in Cheney and being in Kirkland at that facility and playing in Husky Stadium. And I remember doing a photo shoot, uh, <laughs> not a very good looking photo shoot, you know, that was my fault, uh, when they were building what was then called Seahawks Stadium and just trying to envision what it would be like. And not never in my wildest dreams would I have envisioned us creating the best home field advantage in all of sports because it really wasn't that, you know, when I first got there, the Husky games were sold out, the Mariner games were sold out. And the only thing I really knew of was, you know, sort of stories of what it used to be like in the kingdom, but we were literally building something like physically building a stadium. And then I remember when I think it was Todd Lewicki came in and he, he really, I think maybe heard from the fans and came up with the 12 flag and came up with all this other stuff we created together, we created something really, really special. Um, and in the process of that happening, there were just some moments or seasons or plays or games that you, that you'll never forget, but, uh, but it really was an incredible journey and in, in sort of an unlikely one. If you were to, uh, be in the moment say, Hey, someday we're gonna, this is going to be us. And, it would have been hard to imagine, but it, I think it makes it that much more special knowing uh, what's been accomplished. Thank you. Corbin Smith. Hey, Matt, congratulations on this honor. Um, looking back, Mike Holmgren drafted you in Green Bay and then a few years later traded for you. He had unwavering faith in you. Obviously, the first couple of years in and out of the lineup a little bit, but wanted you to be the franchise quarterback. What does it mean to you? Obviously, not getting inducted the same night, but back-to-back -back weeks what does it mean to you to go into the ring of honor same year with Mike Holmgren given everything that you two accomplished together here well Corbin that unwavering faith is not how I would have termed it uh, at different points along the journey but uh, in all seriousness it's a huge huge honor for me just even that Mike Holmgren's being inducted like I take so much pride in that because I know what he meant to my career I know what he meant to my career. You know, when he was in Green Bay coaching Brett Favre, I, I never really felt like he was coaching me. I felt like he was coaching Brett and I was allowed to be there. But the valuable lessons that I learned while getting to watch Mike coach Brett Favre right after he had just gotten done coaching 
Joe Montana and Steve Young, who were very different people, very different types of players. That was incredibly valuable to me. And so when I came to Seattle, you know, it was two years away. And then I came to Seattle and I got to be coached by Mike. I learned firsthand, like what I saw, how hard it is to be coached by him. The, the standard that he sets is so high and such a challenge that when you get to game day, the opponent really isn't the toughest part of your week. You know, the toughest part of your week is a, a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practice with Mike Holmgren when the football is literally not allowed to touch the ground. And, you know, so I'm, I'm just incredibly grateful that, number one, that Mike Holmgren drafted me and I went to such an incredible quarterback coach as a head coach. But then number two, that he then chose to trade for me when I really had done nothing in the NFL. I was not invited to the combine. I was a sixth round pick. I had a pro day. Only one coach showed up to my pro day. Um, so he would not only draft me, but then trade for me a few years later uh, after I'd thrown maybe 29 passes uh, in my NFL career. It meant a lot. And then to go through that journey with him where, you know, what, like I said earlier, it wasn't always easy, but we, we, we weathered the storms and stayed the course and we bought into his message and we were able to, I think, do some special things and set a foundation for, uh, you know, hopefully set a foundation for future success. So um, the fact that, that he's going in and I'm going in the same year, I know how easily that could have been some other combination of players or coaches. So uh, I'm, I'm very grateful. Sean Boyle. Yeah, Matt, just, Kind of wondering how much you consider the legacy of your guys' teams, you know, not just the success you had in the moment, but what it meant for the franchise moving forward and kind of helping. I used to joke about South Alaska and kind of putting it on the map a little bit. I believe those were uh, Jimmy Johnson's words, the South Alaska. I, I, took a, I took offense to that at the time. No, listen, it's a, it's a great question. And, and I would just say that it, when I was a player for Seattle, I always felt like we struggled getting national attention. Uh, we didn't have primetime games. Even when we'd make the playoffs, we'd get sort of the, the worst spot of the playoff uh, scheduling. You couldn't find Seahawks gear anywhere. Uh, you know, my favorite shows on ESPN, when they would do the, the highlights at the end of, on Sunday night, they wouldn't even show a highlight. They would show just like a box score. Um, or maybe a highlight. We never really got that attention. And it wasn't like I wanted the attention. I just wanted someone on our team to get the, the recognition. And I remember, I remember when, you know, maybe Sean Alexander got the cover of Madden. It was like, we all took so much pride in that. Or if someone got the cover of Sports Illustrated, we all took such pride in that. And, and so, so fast forward, when I have left the Seahawks and I, I, I'm in the I'm in New York City for for their Super Bowl in New York City. Everywhere I go on the street, I see Seahawks gear. You know, the media now is like see the Seahawks are a team we cover. They're a team we talk about. They're a team you know who the players are on that team, offensively, defensively, head coach. And so I just think there's a ton of pride that we have in the fact that it was such a struggle being relevant on the national stage uh, for, for a bit. And those guys, Pete and those guys have just taken it to a whole nother level. And so it's, it's, I, I think it's the coolest thing ever. I mean, whether it's my kids or my kids, friends, like the, the uniform color Skittles that Marshawn eats, you know, like whatever, whatever it is, the visor, the DK wear, like, it doesn't matter what it is. Legion of boom. Like, it means a lot that, that they've kind of like earned that respect nationally. Sorry, I should have said you've said South Alaska mocking Jimmy Johnson saying it. Bob Condota. Uh, yeah, Matt, he, he, what, you, what did you know of Seattle, know about Seattle when you got traded here anyway? Well, they're my favorite uniform when I was a kid. Like I grew up with NFL helmet, like wallpaper, like type stuff or curtains, I guess. And uh, like they were, they were my favorite color scheme, favorite uniform, but, uh, but it was always a team that my dad was playing against. You know, I remember my dad was, uh, he won the Super Bowl 18 with the Raiders, the LA Raiders. And the biggest game of the year was the, I think it was the playoff game that where the Raiders beat the Seahawks. So I wasn't necessarily like a, a fan, 
um, of any one team. I was more a fan of like people I knew and uniforms, but I collected football cards as a kid. And I would like, uh, I would basically take my football cards and send them to the players and ask for their autographs. And very rarely did I get uh, a response, but one of the, one of the things that always, you know, I don't know, struck me or a thing I remember is I had sent uh, football cards to Steve Largent and I got those cards back autographed legibly right away. And it was just made such an impact on me that um, him and one other guy, it was a punter named Ron Stark. Those were the two guys that responded quickly. And so I do remember when I, when I found out I got traded to the Seahawks, for some reason, I remembered that moment of like being a third grader or fourth grader and, and remember, oh, hey, that's the guy that Steve Largent, that's, that's my favorite Seahawk. He's the guy that, you know, returned those cards so quickly. But, uh, but I had no idea what I was in for and it was, it was better and, and more incredible than I could have imagined. Brady Henderson. Hi, Matt. Thanks again for your time yesterday. And uh, you kind of just touched on it at the end of your last response, but what did you think was possible when you got traded to Seattle, having, like you said, not really played a whole lot in Green Bay? Well, I probably thought too much was possible. Uh, you know, if I'm being critical of myself, I, I got to Green Bay. And like I said, they were coming off of their second consecutive Super Bowl. Um, Brett Favre had his third consecutive MVP, I think it was. And, you know, it was the same offense and I had played really well in the preseason. And I thought, Oh, well, the preseason's exactly the same as the regular season. Well, that just wasn't how it was, you know, and our team was very talented in green Bay and I got to Seattle and I was probably looking at them like, who are you? And they were definitely looking at me like, well, who are you? And, uh, and so there were some things I needed to learn and some, um, some humbling that probably needed to, to happen and some learning to be a lot more coachable needed to happen. And through the process of, you know, some, some tough times, dealing with some injuries, dealing with some, like dem getting demoted for Trent Dilfer, um, you know, I getting coached really hard by Jim Zorn. I feel like I grew, but it wasn't smooth and it wasn't easy. And, um, so, to, to, so that's kind of how it started. But then once we turned the corner and once we figured out that, you know, Mike Holmgren taught us like, Hey, you guys have what it takes. Like you don't believe you have what it takes. I've been there. I've done it with other teams. Did it with San Fran. did it with green Bay. You have what it takes, but you don't believe it. And we need to get to the point where the players care more than the coaches. And that started to happen, especially especially, especially in 05, I think when we got low for Tatupu on the other side of the ball as a rookie, not even the starter, I don't think he was sort of that other guy on defense that really galvanized us. And, and, and we believed on defense really for the first time. I think we truly, truly believed on offense for the first time. And um, it was like at that moment, it felt like we could do really do anything. Um, we just had to then just actually go do it. And which which made losing in the Super Bowl that much harder because we we knew we were capable of it. We just didn't get it done. Thank you, Tim Booth. Hey Matt, um, sorry for the background noise. Um, there's there's obviously some synergy with with uh, going in on Monday night when, when the Seahawks are playing the Saints and your last home game here in Seattle. But then was was the playoff game. You've talked about the, the memory of walking off the field with the kids after that game, but what else, you know, Marshawn's run, but what else kind of stands out from that night in that game against the Saints? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that was a great year. I mean, people ask me, like, what year are you most proud of in your career? And it, I usually tell them that to 2010 season because it was – such a challenge. It was such a challenge. And to finish strong the way that we did to win that, to host that playoff game, to win it was uh, just an incredible feeling. And we didn't do it alone. Our crowd was like just so huge in that game. But if you were to ask my kids and my family uh, of all their memories of our time in the NFL, I think that game would be the game that uh, we would all mention. And it was my last home game in Seattle. I did not know it was going to be my last home game in Seattle, but uh, it ended up being that. And my kids had never been on the field right after a game like that. That was just never something we did. And it was actually one of the other, one of my teammates' wives 
probably listened to talk radio and was like, oh, this is probably going to be his last uh, time here in Seattle. And so she took my kids down to the railing, found a police officer who put the kids out on the field. And the end result ended up being in my last home game in Seattle, I got to walk off with my kids, uh, with my son on my shoulders, holding my girl's hands, uh, sort of like taking in this amazing atmosphere, waving to the crowd, waving to my wife in the stands. And, um, you know, you just really couldn't sort of dream it up any better. So that was, uh, that was incredibly, uh, incredibly special. And I didn't even know it at the time. So, you know, thanks to Rod Marr and everybody that documented it because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a very cool thing. So I've got these amazing family photos and Lane Gamble looking like Secret Service in all these pictures that I have. It's great. <laughs> Greg Bell. Hi, Matt. No thanks, by the way, for telling us all the old guys about 2007 to join something called Twitter. <laughs> I, I, I hate you for that. I hate myself for that too, actually. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sliding over to Instagram more. It's a lot friendlier there. Oh, you're, you're chic and hip, of course. Uh, for those old guys, we know about the, the Holmgren relationship. What You mentioned 2010. What did you take out of that year with Pete Carroll? What, what was lasting from that or what, what did you get from that? I loved it. I loved it. And I didn't want to love it. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was about to be 35 years old. It's all we were talking about. 35 years old. We got this coach coming in from college. Uh, everything was very upbeat, peppy, rah, rah. He showed a video the first day of all this great stuff we had done in the franchise of Seattle, a lot of which was my era. And he said, all right, that's great. It's in the past. It's over. I don't ever want to talk about it again. We honor it. We love it. We just spent 25 minutes watching it. We're moving on. We're painting every wall. We're taking down every picture. Um, you know, quarterbacks, linemen, receivers, to start every practice, we're going to do bag drills. We're going to sprint. And you guys know the drills, you know, like it's all this kind of stuff. And I really, at the time, expected to not like it. And I absolutely loved it. I loved playing for Pete. I learned so much. Uh, the mindset that he brought to our team was really something unique and special. I remember the very first team meeting uh, where he showed a video. Uh, the very first time he showed a video was a video of Kobe Bryant. You know, I grew up a Celtics fan. The last thing I want to do is hear from a Laker, but he just talked about mindset and he talked about being a competitor and over trying and like all this stuff. And I'm not sure if the whole room got it, but when I listened to it, like it made perfect sense. And it, it actually gave me clarity with our Super Bowl, the Super Bowl 40 that we had lost that I still hadn't really processed at that point. And it just clicked and I, I understood it. And it was, it was just things like that. You know, he, he had three rules when we were there. I could still recite for you those three rules because of how clear the messaging was, how the whole building was talking the same message, rowing in the same direction. Uh, my children could probably tell you the three rules because we have enjoyed them so much. Um, so I just, I really, I really appreciated the competitiveness of everything that he did. Was it always smooth and perfect? No. Um, did I nail it right away? No. Pete's number one rule was it's all about the football. We don't turn the ball over, we win. I started turning the ball over more than I've ever turned the ball over in my entire life. Why, why is that? I don't know. It's like, I've told the story. It's kind of like when you're golfing and someone you're putting and someone says, Hey, don't leave it short. I leave it short. Like, I don't know if that's just a flaw in my personality, but that's kind of, I started playing defensive and it, it took me a while to figure out how to cut it loose offensively and yet not turn the ball over. So there were some growing pains, but I, I loved, I loved the experience. And if I was a coach, if I was coaching a team, there's so many things that Pete did that I would make, I would, I would steal and kind of uh, do it exactly the same way. All right, last one for you, Matt. Tim Booth. Matt, you're obviously a pretty good analyst uh, in your profession now. What do you make of where the Seahawks are at right now? Going into well, it's disappointing because uh, I think we're two and four. I think we should be two and we should be four and two. Um, I think, I mean, I don't know where, where do I start? 
you know, Pete's thing is it's all about the ball, right? It's all about the ball. So the turnovers, the lack of ball security, even the ones you don't lose, the balls on the ground, like that's a that's a problem to me. Like that that's something that needs to get cleaned up if they're going to get it figured out and, and fixed real quickly. And in the same way, I think just creating those turnovers on, on the other side of the ball. But I don't think that, you know, there's probably people out there that feel like the sky is falling. You know, we got a home game against the Saints, which should be an awesome crowd, a home game against Jacksonville, a bye week. I think Russell Wilson probably could come back by then. Um, you know, this is a team that we saw had issues last year, especially on defense got them fixed and they were playing great defense the second part of the year. So I don't know if, if it were me and I'm just kind of looking at the landscape of the NFC, I still think, I still think uh, Seattle can accomplish the goals that they, they set out to have at the start of the year. They've just made it really hard on themselves because they dropped a couple of games that, that they, uh, that they didn't need to drop. All right. Thanks, everyone, Matt. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, Garza, well done on the Zoom. I've been on Zooms with people who don't know how to operate these things. Your skills are very impressive. Good job. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Matt.